Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Lexus Guildford, I'm bringing you an exterior and interior tour of a model year 2018 Lexus RC300 Hybrid Luxury Spec. The RC is Lexus' larger and more affordable sports coupe over the LC. However, it is still said to deliver exhilarating performance with a low, hunkered-down driving position and bold, muscular looks. There are three UK spec options to choose from, in ascending order. Luxury, F-Sport and Premier, with the base luxury spec already being rather well equipped. The RC300 Hybrid is a rear-wheel drive coupe that comes in at around 1750kg depending on the specification, and is 1840mm wide and 4695mm long. Before we can take a look at the front-mounted engine, we must first unlatch the boot. This is done by pulling a lever on the driver's side and sliding the catch to the left. The bonnet is self-supported by two gas struts, with a slight amount of heat shielding on the underside. The RC300 Hybrid is powered by a 2.5-litre petrol hybrid powertrain. The inline-four combustion engine produces 178 brake horsepower and 221 Nm of torque alone. The hybrid system is powered by a nickel hydride battery pack, which discharges slower than lithium-ion, but lasts for longer. This drives a 650 volt permanent magnet synchronous electric motor generator and 140 horsepower front motor. This hybrid powertrain produces a total system output of 220 brake horsepower. This output produces a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 8.6 seconds, with a top speed of 118 miles per hour. The car sits on 18 inch, 5 spoke machine finish alloy wheels, although 19 inch wheels are available on the F Sport and Premier models. Stability comes from double wishbones at the front and multi link rear suspension. Stopping power is provided by front and rear ventilated discs, 334mm at the front. Now we've finished the model overview, we can move to the exterior in depth tour. The exterior aesthetic has changed little with this new model line. This car is finished in sonic white, one of seven available colour options. The front bumper features parking sensors and folds back elegantly at the sides to these lateral air intakes. There is less of the characteristic Lexus spindle grille here, with vertical slats alone taking on the dominant aesthetic. Jagged lines are mixed with soft curves all over the car, but around the grille area they are especially noticeable, with chrome and satin finishes. This element of the Lexus design language has proven to be quite controversial. Above are the white LED daytime running lights with the further LED main lights above that come with auto high beam function. In the F Sport and Premier models, the signature triple L lights feature here. The wide bonnet with its dynamic slope and lateral curve sits atop the engine, with the windscreen and dual wipers further back. Now moving along the side of the RC300 hybrid, we see the dynamic line running along the top. With the flowing chrome lines around the windows, they help to create a more seamless aesthetic. The wing mirrors sit underneath, with their integrated indicators and reverse assist cameras on the underside. They also have a power folding function. The keyless entry door handles are below and behind. These feature white LED ambient lighting. Below and just before the rear wheel arches, the side skirts finish with hybrid insignia. The fuel tank flap is located to the left here, with the tank itself offering 66 litres of capacity and a claimed combined MPG of 57.6. Above is the smooth roof with the shark's fin antenna at the rear. Behind this is an integrated brake light. The short, sloping rear window takes us down the boot lid towards the brake, reverse and indicator lights that wrap around the side of the car and maintain the dynamic L design language and angles seen elsewhere. The rear of the RC300 Hybrid feels like a more muscular place than the front, with the squared off boot lid and wheel arches that still hold onto subtle curves. These run down into aggressive black vents. Moving centrally, we also find the reversing camera, a standard option for this model. Below are the dual exhaust exits, with an aggressive fin diffuser centrally. Now we've finished the exterior tour, we can move inside. The main body of the key is plastic and not as pleasurable to hold as the LC500 key, but the metal components enhance its quality. There are three buttons, lock, unlock and to open the boot. The door opens easily with keyless entry, otherwise known as Lexus Smart Entry. Here we find the interior upholstered in smooth black leather with black metallic inlays, one of four available preset options. Let's start the interior tour with the doors. The top of the doors start with a smooth leather section with the release latch below. There is a slim aluminium strip that separates the top from the central leather upholstered panel and armrest where the electric window, mirror and lock controls are found further forward. Below is the door storage area with a central division and the first of 10 speakers from the standard system. A 17 speaker Mark Levinson system is available in higher spec models. 
Moving to the left, the sills are topped with brushed aluminium kick plates with illuminated Lexus tech centrally. Being a Lexus coupe, the sill is neither high nor wide and the door opens wide enough to allow for easy ingress and egress. Now moving inside, we first find the bonnet and boot release catches, parking sensors, auto headlights, trip reset and cruise control with the first manually adjustable air vent above. With the door closed, we can look at the central panel again, which houses a strip of white LED lights. I think this helps provide a crisp, clean cabin feel. The updated steering wheel sits to the left. It is upholstered in well-padded soft leather with contrast stitching to the inside. The buttons on the left can be used for volume, cool and torque settings. On the right, an extra button has been added, so that all buttons now cater for trip info, lane tracking assist and parking sensors. To start the car and initiate the driver's display and main screen, the ignition must be turned on. This can be done by simply depressing the engine start-stop button to the left of the wheel. Both screens then begin their start sequences. The driver has quite an extensive set of options on the digital screen ahead. The dials are for, from left to right, engine temperature, revs, digital dash, speedo and fuel level. On the central digital display, the info screen is first, showing current MPG initially, then range, MPG, energy monitor, tyre pressure and a sway warning. The nav screen comes after, with media options next. Lane tracking assist and cruise control settings come after. Then notifications such as service schedule and finally driver assist options such as the pre-collision system and road sign assist. The dash ahead is a smooth, flat leather upholstered area with the usual ventilation and speakers. Centrally, we find one of the biggest changes for this model year, the new 10.3 inch screen with Lexus new premium navigation infotainment system that can be found on all model year 2018 models, including the range topping LC500. This system can be controlled by the touch sensitive trackpad below that produces haptic feedback so the user has a better feel for the cursor location. The first option screen is for nav, where the destination can be entered manually, selected via scrolling or chosen from previous destinations. After this comes the AM, FM and DAB digital radio tuner where, once again, the desired radio station can be chosen from a pre-selected list or manually searched for. MIDI comes next for Bluetooth or physical connections such as USB, AUX and CD. Phone connectivity is next, with the app store after. The energy monitor comes after, where the user can watch, in real time, the distribution of electric, combustion and hybrid power. This screen also features consumption and usage information. The penultimate option screen on the bottom row is for general information and settings. With the final option screen, allowing the user to adjust cabin climate controls in addition to seat heating and ventilation. As I alluded to, there is also a column of options along the right edge of this screen that enables a split screen view. Available options are map, media, energy monitor and climate and seat controls. Finally, this screen can also be used as a reversing camera display with active guidance and multiple views to assist with lateral and posterior angles. Below the screen are two many adjustable air vents with the analog clock. Moving down are the controls for the dual zone climate control system with a digital display indicating air intensity and temperature with a hazard light button below. The sliders on either side can be used to adjust the temperature, but can also be a little fiddly to use. Below are the controls for the CD player and entertainment system. Just in front of the gear selector are controls for the driver and passenger seat heating and ventilation, which each have three different intensity settings that can be easily adjusted.
Behind and to the left is the drive mode selector, where the user can change between Eco, Normal and Sport, with Sport Plus being available in the higher models. Behind are buttons for EV or Electric mode, Traction Control Off and Snow mode, which adjust traction stability settings. The gear selector to the right is for the electronic constant velocity transmission that can be left in Auto mode, pushed back for sequential shifting here, or using the paddles behind the wheel. The trackpad for the infotainment system sits behind. It has three main direct access controls for Map, Menu and Return. To the left of this are two open cup holders. The central column storage compartment sits behind. Its lid doubles up as a wide armrest, upholstered in soft padded leather. The lid can be opened by depressing the small latch on the underside and then lift it up to reveal a good amount of storage space with device connectivity at the front. On either side are the eight-way electrically adjustable leather upholstered seats with heating and ventilation functions. All position adjustment controls can be found to the side. Now we're finished in the front, we can move to the rear. On the side of the front seats is a small leather clasp for the seat belts, just in front of the latch that needs to be pulled to fold the front seat and enable its self-slide function. As with the LC500 Coupe, there isn't the most legroom at the rear, but these seats are certainly more usable. There are two main seats on either side, divided by a small plastic section and collapsible armrest with two cup holders. Looking ahead, there are slim leather pockets fitted to the rear of the front seats for added rear storage. and two manly adjustable air vents centrally coming out of the central column. As we finished in the rear, the front seat can now be easily placed back into its original position. Moving outside, the rear boot can be accessed using the button to the right of the steering wheel or on the key. The rear boot has a total capacity of 340 litres with the rear seats up. This rear storage compartment is actually quite deep which may explain why the rear seating has been somewhat compromised. Under the floor lid, we find the usual wheel and jack accessories. As far as I could see, there wasn't an auto-close function here, so the boot lid must be closed in the traditional manner. It's not featured in this video, but there is of course a passenger side glove compartment. Let's move back inside to see some of the final features. The Velour-esque roof liner provides a very soft surface. When pulled down, we can see the sun visors also have illuminated vanity mirrors. The central, borderless rear view mirror is also a really nicely made component. Behind this are two reading lights. So that concludes my in-depth tour of this model year 2018 Lexus RC300 Hybrid. Thanks again to the team at Lexus Guildford. Please find all their contact details in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content, and until next time, thanks for watching.